So today I want to share my experience with long COVID. It's something I struggled with for about two years since 2020 when I first had COVID, and I want to. And I'm now fully recovered. Over over the past few years, I really struggled with my health, and it got really really bad for for quite a while, where there was just so little that I was able to do, and it was a very difficult period. It was, it was quite hopeless as well. The recovery didn't seem possible and it wasn't easy. I've just now recovered fully and I've been wanting to put something out there, a little bit about my experience because uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, one of the main reasons I want to do this is when I was really struggling, and it was kind of like when I hit rock bottom and it just seemed so hopeless and I thought I'd never be able to do any of the things I'd done before I got sick again. I came across some stories online of people who'd recovered from very severe cases of long COVID or chronic fatigue syndrome or ME and it really played an important role in shifting my perspective and my attitude uh, towards recovery and it was vital in helping me to start to get onto the right path and to find the right things to help me in my recovery journey. And it was fundamental to be able to actually believe that it was possible for me to recover and then to start looking for the things that would actually get me there. It was really important to see that, that you can recover and it doesn't matter how long you've been sick for, or how severe or how bad your health got, it's possible. And it can maybe be difficult to find these stories out there. There's a lot of negative information. A lot of people who have been struggling for a really long time, like a long time. And uh, there's a lot of those kind of stories of people sharing how they've been struggling. And that's what I came across a lot. And it can really start to wear you down and you start to form certain beliefs about the possibilities of recovery. It's, uh, it can be difficult then to, to find hope for recovery. So it's when I found those recovery stories, it was a, a massive like turning point for me. I always thought to myself, if I ever recover fully, I would, really wasn't certain that I would get there. But I always thought, if I ever do, I really want to put something out there to contribute to the more positive, inspirational stories that can help people that are still struggling to see that you can recover and that you can maybe pick up something from others who have recovered because that was a really important part of it for me, was listening to how other people recovered and what they did. And their attitude towards it was one of the most obvious things to me, was the more recovery stories I listened to. Everybody recovered in different ways. Everybody's uh, situation was slightly different and the severity of illness was slightly different and their circumstances were different. But you could kind of tell that there was something that was similar in the way that they approached this and they weren't you know, thinking that I'm never going to recover, you know, orienting more towards people who have recovered and as opposed to focusing on people who haven't and uh, reading all of those stories uh, can be important. So <laughs> that's a little introduction and um, I'll try to keep this brief because I've, <laughs> I've been trying to put something out there for a while, but um, it's difficult to think what to talk about because I mean this is something that happened over like a period of two years and there's just so many different aspects of it. I'm not sure what exactly to talk about but uh, we'll just see what comes out and I'm sure I'll make some more videos talking about specific aspects of recovery and we'll see. Yeah so the most important thing for me was when I realized that if I really wanted to recover I had to take responsibility and I'd known this for a long time but it's one thing to think you're taking responsibility for your health and it's another thing to actually do it and you really need to hit proper rock bottom before it finally hits you in the face that there's no other way you just have to do what you have to do you can't avoid it anymore and for a long time it was like trying to get people to understand how bad things were for me and how uncomfortable my situation was and how sorry they should feel for me and how no one else can understand what you're going through and it's, it's just so unfair what you're going through and that just makes things so much worse for you <laughs> it truly does because you kind of overemphasize things a bit and it's a natural thing that we all do even not, not just in these extreme situations but in, in all little 
situations in life when something bad happens to us you kind of tell somebody about it and you want to get a little bit of sympathy so you'll you know make it sound a little bit worse than it is and you don't even realize you're doing this and it doesn't work but what it does do is it makes you believe that you're actually feeling worse than you are so once you let go of that once i let go of that understanding that you can't make anybody else realize what you're going through how you feel it doesn't matter <laughs> it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter how well you explain it you can't control how somebody else is going to perceive what you're saying so that was a really important thing to let go of and then realizing that forget about that what is going to help you to recover is talking about how terrible you feel or how hopeless your situation is going to help you recover no so for me that was a really important turning point <clears throat> and as i said it kind of coincided with um, a change in belief about recovery r- reading and listening to other people's stories of recovery and realizing that holy shit i can recover like these people were worse off than me one of the stories the guy was bed bound like completely bed bound for like i can't remember maybe a year and another one as well and uh, they recovered to full health through different different means like listening to the stories everybody finds a different thing that works for them but realizing that it doesn't matter how bad it is you can recover because what tends to happen is you start to make up the story of you know maybe you see a couple of recovery stories on wherever you're looking online and then you you like you find the differences between your situation and that person's situation and then you use it as a reason that you're not going to recover like they had it worse i have it worse than that person or oh, they didn't have this symptom <laughs> I remember you always see on the comments when someone recovered um and then everybody would be asking but did you have this symptom like i've got this symptom did you have this symptom and if they didn't then they'd be like oh, okay well i don't think you can recover from my situation because i've got this symptom and mine's clearly worse yeah i mean that's that's really holding you back because everybody's going to be slightly different you're not going to find that recovery story that is exactly the same as you and it's very natural and easy to try and dismiss it but it's not helping you it's keeping you stuck so yeah anyways that was kind of like a fundamental shift that was necessary you know to stop going downhill and just start to head in the right direction and then from there it was just like a willingness to face what needed to be faced and to get really uncomfortable so like not running anymore not trying to find a quick solution like early on we all go to doctors hoping somebody can tell us what's wrong it's completely natural i mean that's that's what we do when uh, when we're sick you know it's what we've been taught to do and it's quite a shock when um <laughs> there's nothing that they can do for you and then it turns to like supplements or whatever it is for you diet or could be anything um looking for i mean that's what it was for me was like first supplements trying loads and loads of different supplements what can i take what can i take that's going to make me feel better like so that i don't have to feel like this anymore um and then it was diets like i read other people who done extreme diets like cutting out almost everything and only eating certain things and that fixed the things for them and then trying that and that was actually really tough because i was eventually like there was so much that i couldn't eat and that was one of the hardest parts like i yeah i mean food just became so stressful it's like i needed to eat but i i wanted so badly to recover that i thought i really have to just follow these strict diets if i really want to recover and that just, that didn't work so then letting go of that and then it was you know trying to find somebody that's going to fix me you know like as i was talking about doctors and you know specialists and what not like who who can fix me and it's uh letting go of all of that and realizing that you've got to you've got to take this on yourself you've got to take responsibility and accept that it's going to be difficult and you're going to have to get uncomfortable um and you have to try things you don't know if they're going to work or not you got to keep trying and um yeah it's a very personal journey so is really important it was important for me to orient towards recovery stories and to change my beliefs about this and 
there were a lot of things I picked up on the recovery story that somebody would say about how they approach this and you don't know what it's going to be like <laughs> you can hear them say something and you want that to be true for you but maybe it's not but then something will just click like I remember when I was moving along in my recovery quite well like things had started to head on the right path for me but I was kind of still stuck in a place where you know things had gotten a bit better and I was trying to have a positive attitude about everything but I things still weren't I wasn't fully recovered and I couldn't do anything I wanted to I could you know it started to um, introduce some exercise and whatnot and somebody in one of the recovery stories I watched mentioned I can't remember the exact quote or what they said but their approach was kind of realizing that they had to trust their body you know there were still so many processes going on that they weren't in charge of you know like their heart was still beating their all their cells were still doing what they needed to do you know like almost everything keeping you alive is happening without <laughs> you like controlling it it's just it's just happening and you know just trusting like not fighting your body anymore trusting that it like it's okay it can do it can, it can look after itself and uh, that so that's just like click something in me um i was like oh shit i must just stop trying to fix things and just just trust my body and when i'm feeling the thoughts would come on like you do something and then you're worried you're gonna have a crash or something you're like no it's okay like your body can handle it so that's just a small thing you know you, you'll pick up you pick up things from what people say i remember watching these recovery videos when i was i was really still struggling and people would say something like you've got to find your own way and you know, it's gonna be different for everyone <laughs> It was so frustrating because it was like, I'm watching these videos because I don't know my own way. If I knew my own way, I would I would have found it. I'm sure some of you might be feeling like this, but it really is true that it's not going to be the same as anybody else's journey. And it's now looking back on it that I have recovered. It wasn't the same as anybody else's. It was a completely unique personal journey. But you can't replicate somebody else's experiences. You know, and it just happens naturally as well. You'll listen to somebody's recovery story and then without even realizing it, you'll be trying. Uh, it, it was like this for me, where it's like you start to think that you have to do things the way they did them. You know, they'll say something like, oh, they did this like every day. So then you should like, oh, if I'm not doing that every day, I'm not going to recover because that's what that person did. But it's not necessarily like that. You know, you can pick up things from other people, but what you need to work through is going to be different to what somebody else needed to work through what you know there's, there's so many different factors to this and there were so many different things that I had to face and deal with and uh, things from before having COVID you know like COVID was just the, the the catalyst that that led to this whole thing but there were so many other factors contributing so if you if you're willing to get uncomfortable and face what you need to face and I think that's a really important part of it is is stop trying to like escape Again, all of all of this I'm saying is I'm just kind of sharing my personal experience. I don't want to tell anybody what they need to do because that's the whole thing. Is I don't know what you need to do. I just want to put something out there and maybe something resonates with you. Yeah, when I finally, you know, when you when you have a little crash and all the symptoms would hit, and then you want to try and distract yourself, and it's just natural. But like being willing to just feel what's there and why is it so uncomfortable? You know, sitting with whatever the symptoms were just feeling it and it took me such a long time to get to that place you know it was there was so many cycles of many different things and you know just eventually you get to the point where you just can't try, try hide from it anymore so um, that's really important and then just yeah I think that was really the most important for me was a willingness to feel and then facing yeah, so like not running and facing the fears like even when I stopped becoming concerned about symptoms, so like not l no longer fearing symptoms or doing something and you notice a symptom and then not having that whole panic cycle which would then bring on the symptoms because for me it was all a, like as I, I realized that it was a, a, a stress response system thing, like I could feel that my just, my body was in this hyper alert fight or flight state and that was just causing havoc and like there was in, in all of my, my functioning and then you know then you notice symptoms and then you get into even more hyper alert and then that brings on more symptoms and it's just this vicious cycle that's it's kind of out of it's not like by choice <laughs> it's what's happened 
and um, it's so difficult. But, you know, when you start to notice symptoms and you're like, it's okay, that can be there, you know, feel into it. Don't don't try and like panic and be like, shit, the symptoms shouldn't be here. I'm going to have a crash now for a week. I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm just going to be stuck in bed. You know, those thoughts come. Um, so let the symptoms be there. And that was one step for me. And then the second step was, I did that for a while and things started to get better. But then when I really, then and then without even realizing it, a fear became towards the thoughts. So notice the symptom, okay, that's going to be there. But then the thought that would say, oh no, the symptom's bad. You're like, okay, I must get rid of that thought. I'm, I'm being welcoming to symptom, you know. When I realize that you, that thought can be there as well, you know, so you're doing something that feels a little bit too much. You notice a few symptoms, those thoughts hit, and then you're just like, that's fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> There's a thought saying, oh, uh, washing the dishes right now is too much for me. Oh, okay, that's a thought. That's okay. Like, that can be that. I don't need to... I don't need to try and get rid of it. I don't need to. I don't need to follow it and um, go on to the next thing. And this means this, and this means this, and then the next thing. Who knows? You know, you're in. Uh, you're in a very tough place again. So just not being afraid anymore. But it takes time. It takes such a long time, and uh, there's lots you got to work through and, and whatnot. And as I said, I don't know what you need to work through. So anyways, I just wanted to put this out there. And yeah, I'm now like fully recovered after being struggling with long COVID and with all so many different symptoms, you know. Um, as I said, everybody does this checklisting thing. Oh, but did you have this symptom? Did you have this symptom? And I used to do that as well, where I'd see someone recovered, but oh, did they have this like post-exertional malaise where you have all these symptoms after, you know, exerting yourself? That was, that was an important one for someone to qualify as, uh, you know, legit. <laughs> So yeah, uh, but now now I can do pretty much anything. You know, since um, September last year, got back into all my sports. Can cycle for like three, four hours. Done some really long rides. Pushed myself really hard. Playing football, kite surfing, swimming, playing tennis, going to the gym. It's all possible again. I'm working again finally after two years of you know not being able to go out and really interact with people at all because it was too too much of a strain. I can I work uh, like six hours a day, sometimes more, seven hours, teaching people to kite surf on the beach, which is quite a physical job. And it's tiring, as like it should be. <laughs> Some days I feel like exhausted, and that's fine. You know, it's, it's not then to put on the meaning behind that exhaustion like oh no what's wrong with me what do i what what do i need to fix about this am i going to have a crash again am i going to go back to not being able to do anything and it happens like there's a lot to work through there's so much to work through because that's kind of like a habituated thought pattern that's been happening for years or more depending on how long you've been dealing with this but uh, so you have to work through that but so it was like that for me when i started doing things you know did i push too hard am i going to go back and it's like, oh no, it's fine, that's just a thought. So anyways, I just want to put something out there. Like, I got COVID in 2020, October, and I struggled with my health until, like, October 2022. So it was two years. Um, but, like, from May 2022, I was heading in the right direction. You can recover. Just keep looking for what it is you need and, and keep, feeling into what it is that you need to, that you're not willing to see, you know, there's, there's, there's things you need to work through that you may be hiding from. That's how it was for me. Just, you got this, take it one step at a time and don't beat yourself up. Yeah, that's a big part of it as well. There's, there's so much pressure on oneself to recover, or there was for me, you know, like every time I slipped up and crashed or something, it was like, this is why you're never going to recover. You, you don't have the discipline to pace yourself properly and to cut out what needs to be cut out. You know, just, just have compassion. That was a massive part for me, was practicing having compassion for myself. So do that. <laughs> Maybe that's what you need. To anybody who's still stuck, know that recovery is definitely possible and you'll, you'll find your way and that it's going to be personal and you're going to have to get through it on your own. You can find help and resources from other people. There's, there's so much stuff that's out there, but you have to face what you need to face. No one else can face it. I really wish you all the best. I hope that something I've said can maybe 
offer somebody some hope or inspiration or maybe something that I did can work for you. So I'll definitely put out more videos in the future of more of the specifics of the things that work for me. Maybe they work for nobody else. It was just what worked for me, but we'll see. Um, yeah.